sacrament and the people of God can be summarized as communion, the icon of churches and holy faith. I appreciate the spirit, more now the spirit of Africa. Going back to the roots, roots give us another modern aspect of the church. When the catechists prepare the liturgy, they enter the space of God. Ang simbahan ay patuloy sa kanyang pagpapanibago upang makatulong Sacrament is the visible sign in the invisible reality that affects unity and communion. Catechist should be a people of contemplation. As a catechist, to be a people of using the faith to impart to the learners. As a catechist, we should be able to accept the people of the church as a true way to live. Serve. The budget. The numerical expression of the priest is so privileged to celebrate mass as we enter the the time is uh, the, uh, the eternity as we as we enter the the, the time and space. Prophet must gaze at the face of God. Ecclesia sempre commanda. The church must always be reformed. Pass. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's simplify PCP2, ah. Let's go through the vision. Vision. Nakikita sa likod? The vision mission of the church in the Philippines. Background. 1988, the CBCP voted unanimously to hold a plenary council. Take note, the new code is This is the first ever plenary council held in the world under the code of canon law. Take note, 83 ang new code, 88 decide ang CBCP. 
following the footsteps of Vatican II, three years of preparation. So, 1991 ang PCP2. January to February. January 21 to February 17 of 1991. It was held at the pastoral formation complex of San Carlos. President, Archbishop Leonardo de Gaspi of Cáceres and Archbishop Oscar Cruz, Secretary General. He was full-time now in CBCP, having resigned from his office as Archbishop of San Fernando de Pampanga, a historian. In the opening homily of Archbishop Legaspi, Archbishop Legaspi provided the four directions of PCP2. Number one, Christ is focus. Christ is focus. Number two, Spirit is new evangelization. Number three, context is Filipino. And number four, orientation is pastoral. I repeat, the four directions of PCP2 provide the guidelines of how to go about the renewal of the church of the, in the Philippines Take note, ha? be very careful. We were corrected. Nung ginagawa namin ng NCDP, don't say Church of the Philippines. It's Church in the Philippines. Talagang nagpadala pa ang Roma. Don't, don't say Church of the Philippines. Rather, Church in the Philippines. There's a big difference, sabi ng Roma. Even that simple word of off and in, make a lot of difference now because there is only one church but the church is in the philippines also in the united states in argentina in see what i mean okay, now so once again crisis focus spirit is new evangelization context is filipino orientation is pastoral okay by the way, there is no substitute to having read also the Acts and Decrees of BCP2. Because it was submitted to Rome and the recognitio was given to us by the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II. Now, look at the vision mission. A year after Archbishop Legaspi called us, I was representing Luzon. One priest was representing Visayas, one priest for Mindanao. There were three bishops called, and then three lay people. One of them was Ambassador de Villa. And we were requested to write the National Pastoral Plan. But it did not go down. Why? That was also put into question. Reason is because ang mag implement down ng PCP2 ay hindi ang CBCP. Ang mag implement ng PCP2 ay ang mga obispo sa kanilang diocese. There should be no body between the bishop and his diocese. Which means the bishop will decide on how to implement PCP2. Okay, that's very important. What does that mean? He can call for a synod. He can call for a pastoral assembly. He can call for a diocesan pastoral gathering. But we will not adopt CBCP's pastoral plan, but we will only use it as a reference point. So we were able to make it. In the national pastoral plan, for your information, a vision mission was written. That's why this was hardly spread. Eh? But this summarizes the whole PCP2, the acts and decrees. And the vision mission statement of the church in the Philippines goes this way. Can we read together? Yet deeply aspiring for fullness of life in God, we as church in the Philippines with total trust in God's love envision ourselves as the community of disciples who firmly believe in the Lord Jesus 
and joyfully live in harmony and solidarity with one another, with creation, and with God. Father, in the way of our Lord, we ought to be a church for the poor, which demands evangelical poverty of us all and harnesses the transformative power of the poor among us toward the justice and love of God in this world. To achieve this vision under the leading of the Spirit of God and with Mary as our guide, we shall embark on a renewed integral evangelization and witness to Jesus Christ's gospel of salvation and liberation through our words, deeds, and lives. As bishops, priests, religious, and laity, we together commit ourselves to implement the spirit and decrees of the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines in order to inculturate gospel values in our milieu. By this shall Kaayusan order in harmony be achieved through merchants who are makadios, makataong, makabayan, and makabuhay. Ours will then be a civilization of life and love, a sign of the inbreaking of the Father's kingdom. <clears throat> Let me give you, simply, buying the whole thing, three boxes. and the uh, council, the, the bishop's council. Context. Vision. And mission. Okay? Para masimplify ang PCP. Magsimula tayo sa context, and then, vision. Vision is noun. Mission is verb. The how and the what. Okay? Clear tayo muna doon? Makuha lang yun, okay na. Okay na. Context, ang ginamit na methodology ng reading the signs of the times ay lights and shadows and shadows which means ang ginamit ay SWOT SWOT analysis nag strengths weakness opportunities and threats pero may bago na ngayon ha I hope mag magagamit nyo ang tawag ay appreciative inquiry the four Ds. I-google nyo mamayang gabi. Why? Ang mga tanong doon, what do you like? What do you like? What's, what's happening? What do you like to have more of? What do you like to have less of? In other words, you focus on strengths and opportunities. You don't talk about weakness. Which means, the strengths and the opportunities will solve the problems. It's a new way of planning. Well, they, they might teach you, they will teach you that. Okay, now, Take note, lights and shadows, okay? What are the lights? Okay. And then, what is the mission? Renewed, evangelization. integral, evangelization. Take note, carefully, careful words. The gospel is such a careful theologian. An evangelization that is renewed and integral. An evangelization that is renewed means new evangelization. But there is a principle injected, which is integration. O catechists know that. Integration. Remember the seven integrations of NCDB? Magko cross reference tayo kasi alam niyo yun. The highest integration is the integration of faith and life. Tama? 
may program integration, content integration, source integration. Ang laging malakas yan, si Roach. Si NCDP. Remember? Okay, the seven integrations. But, but focusing simply, when you say principle of integration, it is another word for the interplay of life and faith. When life is animated by faith, there is integration. Okay, now, what is the vision? We'll go into the details later. It is community of disciples of Jesus and a church of the poor. Yan ang dalawa. Please take note, you cannot talk about the church of the poor without the foundational ecclesiology. The foundational ecclesiology is community of the disciples of Jesus. Now, what are the important components of this ecclesiology? One, one communio. Nama? Two, this authentic discipleship. Number three, church of the poor. We'll talk about that in terms of nitty-gritty. So, this is the vision. This is the vision. And this is the lights and shadows. Now, what are the lights? The lights is that Filipinos continue to aspire for fullness of life in God. Ang liwanag sa Pilipinas ngayon, sa kabila ng kaguluhan, kaingayan, inaasam-asam pa rin ng mga Pilipino na maging ganap ang buhay. Gumamit pa yun sa salita, maging maayos ang buhay. Maiahon tayo sa kaguluhan. Take note of the words. Maiahon tayo sa kaguluhan. O maiahon tayo sa kahirapan. Now, what are the shadows? The shadows are divisive conflicts, widespread poverty. Now, let's analyze. Inanalyze no. Divisive conflicts is political. Both within the church and society. Sabi nga doon, nung nag-consultation ng CBCP, nandun ako sa office, nang tinanong nila, anong dapat pag-usapan? Anong dapat pag-usapan? Dumating ang mga questionnaires, sinagot ng mga obispo, ng mga pare, ng mga communities. Alam niyo, ang lumabas, frequency high, ang dapat pag-usapan ng buhay ng mga pare. At ang buhay ng mga nagpapare. Bakit? Sapagkat, ang pare mahalagang sangkap ng buhay simbahan. You can build or break the church because of a presbyter. When you say build, when you have a good presbyter, you have a good church. In other words, the church is only as good as its priests. Then si Rosales, nasa malay-balay pa siya, no? sabi niya, in different episodes of church history, the renewal of the church is always preceded by the renewal of the clergy. That is why yun ang susi na ginamit ng CBCP. Kaya nagkaroon ng assist. At sino ang committed doon? Yung tatlong kardinal. Sin, Pidal, Rosales. Between the three, ang committed, Rosales. Nung naging arsobispo ng Maynila. What does that mean? You renew the ecclesia when you renew the holiness of priests. Plus the fact that Rosales became a member of the Synod of Bishops that wrote Pastores Davo Bobis. Yun ang lumabas. Okay. Ngayon, ididikit-dikit ko ah, nagkaroon ng National Turgy Congress. Remember? World Trade Center? Yes. 
nung nagtanong-tanong na ng mga issues, sabi sa akin nila, sabi sa ni, ni, ni Cardinal, yung mga questionnaires ng obispo, ha, ikaw ang mawalikta. Yung sa mga pare, hayaan mo na silang sila. Kinakailangan sa mga obispo, kunin mo agad, tapos i-frequency mo agad, ha? Kung ano ang mga issue. Okay? Tapos yung mga pare, hayaan mo sila. So, nagkolekta na kami. Ano ang mga issue na dapat natin harapin? Ano ang mga problema na dapat natin harapin? Ang mga pare, lumabas. Obispo. Ang issue nila, mga obispo nila. <laughs> ang paghawak ng mga obispo sa mga pare. Ang pag-aalaga ng mga obispo sa mga pare. The shepherding role of the bishop, not with the diocese, but with the presbytery. Kung aaralin mo naman, talagang wala naman talagang formal science na inaaral ng obispo para alagaan ng mga pare. Pero, yung mga obispo, nung kinolekta ko na yung mga questionnaire, ano mga issue nila? Pare. No, pare. Pero, ang number one nila, sabihin ko sa inyo, is not about the sexual issues of priests. But you know what? The management of church resources. Glaring yun, number one yun. In terms of frequency. That is why almost all dioceses underwent a training on accounting manual for dioceses, audit system in dioceses, so that when transfers happen, there is accountability settled, which helps the priest that that parish is not for you, it's for the people of God, which is a shifting. Kaya lumabas ang isang decree. Ano yung decree na yon? From Arancel to Titan. Malaking problema yan. From Arancel to Tithing. But, nakalagay doon, after a thorough pastoral catechesis, Tithing will be implemented. You focus on on, on Tithing? No. You focus on? Catechesis. catechesis. Why? The priest must be convinced on what Tithing is. Now, divisive conflicts, therefore, is political. Number two, Widespread poverty is economics. Therefore, the two major problems in Philippine society and church in the Philippines are political, power issues, and economics, financial resources issues. Which means these political and economics are under the heading of stewardship. That is why a good number of dioceses now have adopted a stewardship program. Okay. Are you getting some ideas? May kulang dito. Itadagdag ko na. Wala pa sa PCP to to. Pero one line, two lines. The third shadow is ecological devastation. Ecological devastation is the third. Which is the care for Mother Earth, which has become a big issue. Why? Because the Filipino bishops were the first ones to issue a pastoral letter on ecology. What is happening to our beautiful land? First ever. And that was quoted extensively in Laudato Si by Pope Francis. What does that mean? That our bishops knew where the church in the Philippines should go. Okay. And that, I remember during this time, I was in PCP2, I was a delegate because of my role as dean of the graduate school of San Carlos. There was a question even during this time to the council whether EDSA was a religious moral event because there were some sectors in the church who are branding EDSA, people power, as simply a political event. Cardinal Sin had to request Archbishop Legaspi for a special time for him to discuss the ins and outs of EDSA. That it was indeed a moral option 
that the church should engage itself in politics because politics, like the rest of human endeavors, needed to be evangelized. He was very strong. Those are moments that I could not forget. A special time. He was not part of the schedule, but he requested. And he went on the podium to discuss EDSA, people power, and the role of the church at that time. Take note, it was still the big Manila. Wala pa yung ibang dioceses. Manila was the metropolitan sea in the Philippines. We were the third biggest archdiocese in the world with 7.5 million Catholics. On the Baliches, 1.5. Mga 1.5. Ang Manila ngayon, alam niyo, 5 cities lang, 2 million. Ang pinakamalaki ngayon, Cebu. Malolos. Yan ang malolaki. Kaya pag natanong sila, gusto niyo maghati. No way. And they were asked, which is for me, in a way, that's the wisdom behind uh, having one place. No? Lights and shadows. Now, let's look at renewed integral evangelization. In renewed integral evangelization, you have a double message. <coughs> you have a double message. The message of salvation and liberation. Are the two the same? Answer is yes. But something is highlighted in the area of liberation. Let's look at it. Ano yung mga slides? O, dito yung mga alam. Focus mo na ako dito, ha? Ayan. Ayan. Slides and shadows. Kung gusto niyo itong aking slides, bigay ko sa inyo, ha? i-upload na lang sa Eche o sa Lasal. Yan. Okay? Now, what are the three objectives of PCP2? This came from Archbishop Oscar Cruz. Number one, that every Filipino Catholic may have an integral spirituality. Integral, holistic spirituality. Why? Because take note, remember that article written and the article is entitled, Split Level Christianity. We say one thing, we do another. Well, the first objective of PCP2 is that every Filipino Catholic may develop an integral, holistic spirituality. Number two, that every Filipino Catholic may help build a participatory church. And a very strong move at that time was the Mindanao experience. And the Mindanao experience is the basic ecclesial communities. They call it at that time a new way of being church. Participatory church. That everybody engages himself or herself in the building of the church. And third, that every Filipino Catholic may engage in social transformation. The transformation of the different areas of life, social, political, economic, ecological, all areas of life now. That is why you discover this. If the universal church has Vatican II, the church in the Philippines has PCP II. And it took us more than 20 years before we implemented the gains of Vatican II in terms of renewing the church. Now, objectives. As I said, double message. The double message is salvation, liberation. Go back again to the vision, mission statement. A message of salvation and liberation. Now, there is a focus on each. When they speak of something, or they speak of the same thing, something is highlighted in the message of salvation. And that is the principle of integration. Okay, ano? The renewal of catechesis, liturgy, and social apostolate. Diyan lumalabas na ang contribution ng NCDP. Remember? 
Doctor Moral Worship? Remember Priest, Prophet, King? Creed? Code? Cult? Well, iba-ibang salita, they say the same thing. Catechesis, Liturgy, Social Apostolate. Ang catechesis, ano yun? Doctrine. Tama? Ang liturgy. Social Apostolate. See? Mas gusto ko, www. Word, Worship, Witness. Tama? Okay. Magandang re recollection din yun. www.com www.com Word, Worship, Witness, dot com. Anong com? Commitment. Oh. Ano mga katikisa? Ano yung sa mga katikisa para matandaan nila? Nan, lalo na sa mga ano, volunteer katikis, malilimutin. Di ba yung mga over 60? Ano nga daw yun? Ano nga yun? Mga nakataas pa yung paa yun habang nag nagpo-formation pa, ano? Di ba? Okay. Kumakain pa yun ng mani habang nagsusulat. Tapos namumopia pa sa isa't isa. Ayun ang ating ball cuts, eh. Di ba? <laughs> At may paypay pa yun habang... <laughs> yun ang katikista. In other words, make it a simple, bite-size. Yun ang sasabi kong bite-size concepts. Kaya simple sa akin ay word, worship, witness. Am I right? Dot com. Actually, hindi galing sa akin, galing sa isang SVD who gave a recollection to the priests in the Diocese of Caloocan before. That's why I have to also quote them. Now, Catechesis, Liturgy, Social Apostolate. <coughs> and they have to be renewed. How? With new methods, new expressions, new fervor. Where did that come from? John Paul. <coughs> Remember? When he spoke in Haiti, he said, new evangelization with new methods, new expressions, new fervor. Am I right? Kinuha lahat yan ng PCP2 kay John Paul, itong second box na to. Now, take note, eto na. Pakita ko sa inyo. Yan. O yan na. Sige nga. Yan ang nasa NCDP. Kaya tinatawag na integration. You have to renew each area, but you have to do integration. Now, it must be, it must be implemented in terms of orthodoxy and orthopraxis. Right teaching and right practice. Am I right? Tamang pag Drawn from the sources of the word. The sources being... In NCDP, scripture, tradition, and human experience. Tama? Bakit nga pagbalita rin yun yung tradition? Tradition, scripture, human experience. These are the sources. Am I right? Now, take note. The caution is this. At nakalagay yan. Nakalagay yan. When you focus simply on worship without any doctrine and morals, you fall into? When you focus only on morals without doctrine and worship, correct. When you focus simply on doctrine without any implication on morals and you don't bring people to worship, you fall into? Or another word is indoctrination. Lahat cerebral. It must be holistic. This is found in NCDP. In other words, yung DMW natin sa NCDP, may kahulugan yon. Doctrine, moral, at nakalagay yon. Context, exposition. Sa exposition, nandun ang DMW. Tama? And which will end in integration, which is spirituality. The integrating moment is spirituality. Now, CFC is not like CCC, while there are similarities. 
CCC has four parts. Remember? Read. Cult. Code. Prayer. Am I right? Yes. So CFC, tatlo lang. DMW. Ang spirituality all over. Make a study. Maybe at a late, later conference, I will give you the similarities because I'm now doing the, the strict scholarship of CCC and CFC because it's the first step in the revi revision of CFC. Haba, I'm now making the steps because I have to present that to the bishops of NJ. Okay. Now, gusto ko lang makita nyo yung mahalaga. Ayan, no? In other words, there needs to be one whole presentation of the faith. Creed, cult, and code. Okay? Questions? The renewal, therefore, must be integrated. That it is not simply memorization. Rather, it is to create the experience of Jesus and the church. Every catechetical encounter must be the encounter with Jesus, which means not a set of abstract truths, but Jesus himself. And that is the challenge. How do you package Jesus? But I will go to this the powerful packaging is best in the life of the catechist. I follow the words of St. Francis who said to his brothers, In all you do, preach the gospel. When necessary, use words. In all that you do, preach the gospel. When necessary, use words. Witness of life is still the powerful tool to bring young people and children to a greater realization of their faith. Output, simply lang. Most of the young people entering the seminaries today come from the public schools, not from Catholic schools. If you study, catechesis in the public schools is only once a week. Ama? In Catholic schools, it's every day. Why aren't the catechists in the Catholic schools inviting these young people to a greater love of Jesus when in fact every day they talk about Jesus? What are the catechists in the public schools and parishes doing that would invite, inspire young people to enter the seminary? It is because these catechists exemplify a noble witnessing Pag tinanong mo yung mga seminarista, yung mga seminarista ko sa Carlos, sa Immaculate Conception, ba't ka nagpaway? Simple lang, yung katikista po, inaakay kami. Maganda ang buhay. Simple lang sa amin, si Caloring. Ay, si Caloring, grabe. Hanggang ngayon, patrona ng mga katikista sa Maynila. Patrona. Sa umaga, nagtuturo yan sa public schools. Volunteer catechists. Walang bayad. Sa hapon, nandun sa mga slum areas, nagtuturo ng catechists. Binigyan niya ng pro-eclesia at pontinan siya ni Cardinal Sin. Okay? Binigyan ng baon ni Cardinal. Pinamigay ang pera. Nanalo na-nominate sa Mother Teresa Award, nakatanggap ng kalahating milyon. Nung kahaponan, pinamigay ang pera sa slum area. Walang naiuwi sa bahay. Nung sumakit na antyan, walang maibayad na 500 sa PGH. Tumawag ang pamilya kay Monsignor Clem. Takbo si Monsignor Clem, binayaran yung 500. Na-discover, may cancer of the stomach. Nung dumalaw ako, sabi niya, Pader, pwede na uli akong bumalik. Hindi, magpahinga ka na. 
Yan na lang ihalay mo. Hindi, kulang pa ng katikista. Kailangan pa. There was an experience. Pumunta siya sa pare. Sabi niya, Father, nasa nababa na po ang mga bata. Ay, mamaya na yan. Tapos pinagtaklaban ng pinto ng pare. Kasi nasa siyesta pa ang pare. Ang ginawa ni Calorie, lumuhod sa harap ng pinto ay ng kwarto ng pare at nagdasal. After one hour, binuksan ng pare ang pinto at gising na. Nakaluhod si Calorie. Sabi ng pare, halika na nga, papakumpisod na ako. Noong namatay, noong burol, every day, nakakapitong misa, nakapila kami ng mga pare <laughs> ng pagmimisa para kay Calorie. I told Bishop Milo, you have to open her course for identification. But she's not an exception, she's the general rule. You study them, exemplary catechists. Exemplary. That's catechesis at its best. Not knowledge, no. The witness of a holy life. If you study the new evangelization, the pillars are the saints. Follow the pathways of the saints, you're on the right track. Be holy, you're on the right track. That's what I call the output of the principle of integration. Now, take note, that is, now, next. Dito sa catechesis, by the way, uh, balik ako, no? Dito sa catechesis, renewal of catechesis, liturgy, social apostolate, you will discover, this is the area of Father Dex that will be tomorrow. Dito pinakita ang vision of catechesis in the Philippines. I will not deepen that because that is the work of Father Dex tomorrow. What is catechesis in the Philippines? Okay. Christ-centered, rooted in the Word of God, authentically Filipino, and developmentally appropriate. Four characteristics of catechesis. Christ-centered, rooted in the Word of God, authentically Filipino, and developmentally appropriate, or systematic. Okay. Now, take note, when you look at those characteristics, that's your work tomorrow. You renew catechesis by means of going back to Christ. Go back to Christ. The charismatic approach, Christ, telling and retelling the story of Jesus. Number two, rooted in the Word. How do you use the Word in the catechetical experience? What is the power of the Word? Can I tell you this? I'll give an example. Dito sa Manila ngayon, my priest here from Manila would agree with me. We have now a phenomenon known as the feast. Ni Bo Sanchez. Every Sunday, in malls at PICC, overflowing with young people. When I spoke to one priest, ito ang findings. Talaga naman. The young people go. They leave their parishes, they go to both. You know why? Number one, sense of belonging. Very welcoming. In other words, our parishes are cold. Young people feel they belong. We have to look into that. Number two, because they're welcoming, they're youth friendly. They can tolerate the idiosyncrasies of young people. Hindi sila sinusungitan ng pare. Number three, o oh, ito pa, <coughs> pag daw nagmisa yung mga pare doon, hindi ba ako na-invite? Sila yung invite, pero yung mga, yung mga sudyante kong pare, na, naging sudyante kong pare, na-invite na. Sabi sa akin, alam mo, Father, kami pa nagbibigay ng homily, inoorasan. Father, 10 minutes lang, ha? So habang nag-homily, binibigyan ng ano, 
Six minutes only. Five minutes. Minamadali. Pero ang teaching ng lay, isang oras ang kalahati. Unfortunately, ang sabi nila, Father disturbing. Number one, they don't talk about the social issues. Majority of them are pro duterte Number two, they teach the gospel of prosperity, how to get rich. Sabi ko, walang Pascal mystery, yun ang problema, walang cross. Which means, attractive, no suffering, no pain, laging masala. Sabi ko, hindi yaan ang tinuturo. Sabi nila, delikado nga. Kasi nung nag-present nga, si Mo, katabi ko si Broderick, si Bishop Broderick, nung pinipresent na yung template, nagtingin lang kami ni Broderick. Sabi ko, Bishop, pinakabahan ako rito. Oo, oh, alam ko nang iniisip mo, Jerry. Walang Pascal mystery. Opo, eh. Eh, yun ang sentro. 